this rather snappy, won't you? I have some very heavy thinking to do before 10 o'clock. Welcome to another episode of Get a Ride Texoma with us, the Texoma Trio. I'm Mike Hendren. And this is Terry McAdams. That's Trey Sorala. And that's ChatGPT. Yeah, yeah, we have, so, yeah, we just had a conversation a little bit with ChatGPT. I was going to try to experiment a little bit, yeah. but, you know. He's monitoring us I right thought now. he wanted to play the dozens with me. I don't know. We're about to go. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, would you like to play a game? <laughs> well, our mission here is to inform and entertain you as much as we possibly can. We focus on events and news and happenings all around North Texas and Southern Oklahoma, and also around the region, the state, and the nation, and around the globe as well. So we try to help you uh, understand some things. We give you our opinions as well from time to time. Imagine that. And uh, we also want you to share this with all of your friends and family and coworkers and people you love and people, you, especially the people you hate. It drives them nuts. Uh, on your social media platforms, uh, just tell them all about us. Share the links with them for YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcast. Help us spread the word about the podcast. And also, go to our Facebook page, Get It Right Texoma, on Facebook, and give us your feedback as well. We'd love to hear from you yep. on our uh, social media page as well. And you can follow our website, GetItRightTexoma.com. Please do that as well. Alrighty. Now, all that said, it is brought to you in part by Eddie Hills Fun Cycles of 401 North Scott in downtown Wichita Falls. EddieHillsFunCycles.com, the website. Uh, Mac Tech Solutions at 4020 Ray Road, Suite 3B here in Wichita Falls, MacTech-Solutions.com, and Lolly and Pop Sweet Shop, LPSweet.com, the website, and on Facebook at Lolly and Pop Sweet Shop, L-O-L-L-I-E is how you spell Lolly. That's how you find us on Facebook. Easy to do. Well, let's see here. we got a couple things uh, happen around the area. The Downtown Art Walk, it's the first Thursday in each month from 530 until 9. Seems to get a little bit bigger Every time they do one, I, it's, I, I they're, they're pretty big. I don't know how big August was. I, I, August was pretty dang hot. It's pretty hot, but but, but I, I, th still. I think there was a lot of people there. I didn't. I was didn't actually drive by that day, and yeah. I, I was out of I was out of the area when that happened. So. I will tell you this: anybody that says that downtown Wichita Falls is dead is not paying attention to downtown. Oh, Wichita absolutely Falls. not. No, there's a lot, and and there's I, an activity. September, and I think they're going to have it in October. Yeah, and so the next couple of months are still going to have it. So the first Thursday in September, and the first Thursday in October. Yeah. I think it'll be a lot of fun, and yeah. it's, there's just so much to do out there. There's street vendors, there's people selling, selling food, and and just sundries, and the farmer's yeah. market is open up. There's just a lot yeah. going on. A lot going on. It's a lot of fun. Backdoor Theaters Improv is coming up on September 21. I, we're telling you early because it's, it's been selling out, so you need to get yeah. your tickets. Go to Backdoor, Google search Backdoor Theater, but if you buy them on the website there, it's going to be, I believe, on the main stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the improv. It's, if, if you've ever watched uh, Whose Line Is It Anyway, mm -hmm. it's like that. It's a lot of fun. It's, yeah. uh, it is adult, so don't yeah. take children. Yeah. There are times that there's words that rhyme with duck that are said. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, but it is fun. It's a good time oh. with your friends and stuff like that. Yeah, it, is, it will be a really, really good time. Hey, we've been focusing on local restaurants every show, uh, trying to highlight some of the local eateries and, and locally family-owned restaurants. And uh, this particular show, we're going to talk about one called Fully Loaded Potato. Now, this is a downtown, speaking of downtown, this is a downtown Wichita Falls restaurant, right? right. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Been open for, I don't know, has it been a year Maybe yet? close to a year. Or close yeah. to a year. And I have not been there yet. Oh, it's good. I've been there several times. I have not been there yet. Yeah. yeah. It's, on, it's on the corner of, it's where Gypsy Kit used to be, on the corner of Indiana and 8th Street, maybe? Might be. It's, it's right around the corner from the... Uh, Where's the the pub? Not the pub. The uh, the bar down there, the Irish bar. Oh, uh, Iron Horse. Iron Horse. Yeah, it's it's, it's on that corner. Yeah, Iron Horse is on. Is that Eighth Street or Seventh Street that Iron Horse? I think is it's Eighth Street. It's, uh, where Casa Manana. Uh, yeah. It's yes. Casa Manana, yeah. and then coming uh, towards yeah. Scott. You, it's you, Iron Horse, right? And then it's it, so right on the corner. Yeah, is the yeah. Potato, it's, but you know. it's not on Scott. It's on Indiana. No, no, it's in Indiana. Right, yeah, right. Because block away. Yes. Well, I guess as the name implies, you can get fully loaded potatoes there. No, so. they just sell fries. <laughs> no, yeah, no, they have a lot of cool stuff. They have a lot of good stuff, and they do yeah. have baked potatoes. They they have other things, but that's kind of the cornerstone of it. And their baked potatoes are massive. I mean, it's. It's one per. I mean, I guess one person could eat one. I don't know how you could, but uh, they have uh, 
you could share a meal like that. You could take some home. And baked potato works works really well in an air fryer. Mm-hmm. They warm up well in the air fryer. But they, yeah. have, they, have, they have bacon and they have everything you could think of to put on this baked potatoes. And it's really, really good food. Yeah. And locally owned and operated. Bacon makes everything better. Absolutely. <laughs> are, Just saying. Are, except for, are you kind of getting almost, we got bacon overload. I I agree with that, but it's almost like people want to put bacon on everything these days. And it's like, that's... At some point, let's, let's slow down on the bacon a little bit. Well, I'll tell you what. I bacon think it is was, a great publicist. I, I, I want to say it was Whataburger, I may be wrong, that came out with a bacon Dr. Pepper shake. Yeah. I, it was an intriguing flavor. Yeah. I, I don't it's know. not something I would want every day. Well, have you ever had... But it was intriguing. Have you ever had uh, fried bacon, like chicken fried bacon? It's not that good. It, it I had some. Great. It was tough. Yeah, I didn't like it. It, it was, sounds great. It chewy. Like, oh, chicken fried steak and bacon. Yeah. Nah. I, I don't know if it was the great. way mine was cooked, or, but mine was. It all had like a jerky type texture to well, it. Yeah, I don't know how you, you could know. not cook it. I don't know how it could not be real tough. Yeah. I, I don't know. I. It, it's one of those deals. Sometimes things sound really good. Yeah. And then they're not. I, one time I went to Twisted Root Burgers in in the in Dallas in Deep Ellum, mm-hmm. and they had a donut burger. And I was like, that's kind of intriguing. It's a hamburger, but it's donuts. For the bun. Yeah. For the bun. It's really not that good. It, it's it's too sweet. There's too much sweet in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, to me, it was not that great. Uh, Twisted Roots great hamburgers. I think but I think the, the, the trick there, I've had one like that that was actually pretty good. I think the trick is you got to balance the sweet and savory just right. You know why, don't you? The seasoning on that, on that meat's got to be on point. It wasn't a Circle M Bakery donut. That's probably the problem. <laughs> It Circle and Bakery. That's another. Wait, wait a minute. We've already done their focus. We need to send them yeah. a bill now for yeah, that. Okay, yeah. But fully loaded baked potato. It's a great place. Uh, go check out their website, yeah. and it's really good food. And, and you got to get by there and try it out. It's in the old. I believe it was the Kruger. Wasn't it? There used to be. There used to be a jewelry store in that air building there. And if you look at the, if you're sitting inside and you look up, you can still see the the like the face of a watch around the doorway. Some of those old buildings were pretty fascinating. You that had the might Zales be. Building. The, you had the Zales building that was over where where, that's where D4s was for a million And that years. was Carrot Bar and Bistro, which is now right. gone too, I right. believe. But, but I believe this was Kruger Jeweler, Jewelers or something like that, that when we were right. young. When we yeah. were kids. And it's a pretty – if you look in there and just kind of look at the architecture, you can see some of the old really neat handcrafted architecture. Kruger, uh, Kruger makes sense now that I'm thinking about it. It makes sense that that was there. It does. Well, let's talk a little bit about um, Jason Whitlock is in the news, uh, talking yeah. about the George Floyd scholarship. And for those of us who don't know who Jace, Jason Whitlock is, tell us because I'm, sure I'm not the only one. Jason Whitlock started his career as a, a sports reporter, mm-hmm. okay. and he was actually on the show The Sports Reporter some. He was on ESPN. Yeah. Um, he got tired of the corporate media and being told what to say and how to say it. He's a, he's a black guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's conservative. He's I, and look, I don't agree with all of Jason Whitlock's ideals. If you listen to him, he's a uh, you know. There's some things that he just that he, he doesn't believe. He believes okay. in patriarchy as a part of the matriarchy uh, leadership. I don't, I don't agree with that. I think women are just as capable of leading as men. Um, I, I I would have no problem with a woman in the White House as long as it's the right woman. But you like Trump, so you must be a. Femin- yeah, they're not a feminist. Misogynist. Yeah, Misogynist. yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. Yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, sorry. But no, yeah, no. Jason Whitlock, but he's but he is interesting. I do listen to his podcast some, uh, and he comes up with hot takes. He does talk sports. <clears throat> somebody also talks politics and that sort of thing. He talked about, he called it the George Floyd Scholarship, and this is why. This was the context. There are two guys, and I don't know the, who these guys are. They're, they're two black guys that were given a radio show and the radio show's ending and they were talking about that they've had a great time running this radio show i believe it was either on fox new fox sports or espn they were given this radio show and this is their account they admitted this Mm -hmm. right after the george george floyd riots hit they were given this radio show and it was almost like espn fox news whoever it was was like we need to find some black people to put on the air. And Jason, and he's right about this. If you look at commercials, you look at movies, you look at TV shows, 
since George Floyd, there has been a massive uptick in how many black people you see on the air. And it's and it's way disproportionate now, basically, to the rest of the rest of the population. I, I mean, I'm I'm just being honest. How many Asians do you see on the air? Very few. Not many. How many Indians do you see on the air? Very few. Even Hispanics. There's more Hispanics in America than there are black people in America, and yet you see ten times the amount of black people on commercials yeah. and stuff that you do Hispanic people. Hmm. So when you're talking about representation. And look, I don't care one way or another. I'm just pointing out facts. And Jason Whitlock pointed this out, and he called it, he called it, not Trey, he called it the George Ford Scholarship. He said, basically, these guys got a scholarship to do a, to a, a radio program based on, uh-oh, we need to do something in the reaction to this George Floyd thing, and so we're going to give two black guys a, pod, a, a, a radio co- cast so not based on their talent or their skills no, or mean, their ability. Apparently is, they were talented enough, yeah. but it wasn't. But according to these guys, CBS Radio, whoever this radio show, they were not looking to put these guys on until George Floyd happened, and all of a sudden they put them on. They came to them and said, "Hey, we want to give you a radio show." Yeah, and you and and they they basically said, "You just run it the way you want to run it." It, it, it was almost oh yes yes, it, and they they called it whatever they called it. And it was all that. And now it's ending because the listenership is not there. And now what Jason Whitlock is saying is that scholarship is running out. Oh, yeah. These corporate, these corporate media pla- these corporate places are now going to look. We did this in reaction to this, but we're not willing to keep losing money mm-hmm. by, by supporting stuff based on some cause that it has, doesn't have to do with our bottom line. So now all of that is over. Black Lives Matter is over and all that, or, or it's in the background. Now we can go back to trying to make money. And these guys are off the air now because of that. And that was what Jason Whitlock called this, the George Floyd Scholarship, and, and explained his take, which I just explained. Right. I think it's very interesting, his take. Yeah. Whether you agree or disagree with it, which is fine. The, the but bo- I think it's interesting. The bottom line with, with business, if you're, you're – Private enterprise, publicly traded company, doesn't matter. You're in business to make money. If you're doing something that ultimately starts to just cost you money, you're just mm-hmm. bleeding cash constantly because of it, you either stop doing that thing or you bankrupt yourself yeah, potentially. Exactly. That's that's your options. You can either stop doing that thing that's sucking all the cash life out of your business or you can end up going broke. Yeah. And and that applies to anybody sitting at this table in anything that we do, any corporation out there. It doesn't matter whether you employ five people or 15,000 people. It doesn't matter how many people you employ. It doesn't matter what business you're in, whether it's media, retail, service industry. When you're doing something that's that's just sucking the life out of your business model, you got to stop doing that thing. Well, and I've at been- some point you got to go, "Okay, this is not this is we're not making money on this anymore." You know? and, and I've complained about this for years. I complained about it on the radio show. <clears throat> know your audience. Yes. Who are you advertising to? Yes. Look, if you're advertising Dove soap, or if you're aver- or, or a, a, a certain line of car, you know that's a the passenger car that everybody drives, and you're and you're mm-hmm. and you have a very diverse um, mm-hmm. clientele for that. Mm-hmm. By all means, mm-hmm. put all that diversity in there, but quit forcing diversity in places that it doesn't matter. I saw Granger was a perfect example. Yeah, I saw a Granger commercial the uh, not too awful long ago. Okay, mm-hmm. there were I, I used to know the numbers. I think there were seven people. Of those seven people, there was one man, one white guy, and one Hispanic. Okay, so do you think who do you think the number one uh, consumer of Granger is? Granger, by the way, most if you don't know, is a industrial supply outfit. The number one thing is white men. Probably. Well, I was going to say white males. Probably Probably number two is Hispanic men. Yes. Yes. Not how many black females shop at Granger. Uh, There are some. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. But what I'm saying it is if you have a a commercial with seven people and two of them are black women, you are not, you're, you're not, this is not the face of your, of your, um, your clientele. If you, if you went to a Granger outlet and you, and you sat there and you counted people coming in the door, there might be one female out of a hundred people that comes through the door. You're right. There, there's hardly any women at all. There. Yeah. It's Possibly. mostly men and it's mostly white guys or yeah. Hispanic guys. Right. I mean, yeah. camping world was the same thing. 
Yeah. Camping World, I think one time they had 14. Because I, I counted because it was so blatantly obvious. Yeah. 14, and like nine of them were black people. Yeah. It's like, okay, go to a Camping World. Uh -huh. Yes. Do black people buy campers? Absolutely. Yes. But when you have 14 people in there, more than half of them being black people does not represent your clientele. No. Two or three of them would represent your clientele probably. You, you got to think about what is reality. We, we, if you if you want if you want to sit here and scream that uh, diversity 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 that's fine, yeah. but diversity means you're that that if you want to take your clientele, what does our clientele look like, and make it that diverse? Quit shoehorning people in right. just to say, oh yeah, we checked that box. It's it's yeah. DEI, and and that's quit what checking is. boxes. That's what it is checking boxes. You know, because you you you're, you don't want, you certainly don't want someone coming down on you because you didn't check the right box. Yeah, it's it's nuts. It's crazy. Well, I'll tell you another one that pissed me off on the other direction or, or irritated me. Not pissed me off. I, I don't care that much, but it irritated me. There was a commercial. I think it was a Geico commercial, which they have some pretty clever commercials. And it was of the Harlem Globetrotters Moving Company. Mm -hmm. Okay, what color are the Harlem Globetrotters? They're all black. Yes. Okay, no problem. That's just reality, right? Yeah. So. The Harlem Glo this couple hired a Harlem Globetrotters to move their to move their house, but it couldn't be a black couple. It had to be a black man and an Asian woman. It's like can't black people have their own commercial? <laughs> because it would make sense if you said the Harlem a black couple a, a couple hired the Harlem Globetrotters, and it could have been it could have been a white couple that hired well, Harlem on, Globetrotters because the Harlem Globetrotters are ubiquitous. Not only black people like them, oh, yeah. lots of white people like them. But my point was. Yeah. That commercial, Geico could not stand themselves to have two people of the same color as a couple. Yeah. They had to come up with some way to make it DEI, to check yeah. boxes. And is it? And yes, there's plenty of mixed race couples. That's true. But if you watch TV, you would think that 95 percent there that hardly any two yeah. black people or any two white people or any two Asian people or any two Indian people or any two Hispanic people live together or uh, are married. It's ridiculous. It's it not. Is. Most couples are more than average, or the same race. Well, you you mentioned uh, or, or more more than more more than a, a majority. I, I believe the majority in yeah. America are either black people, white people, stuff like that. Doesn't mean there's there's not a lot of diversity, and that's fine. You, you mentioned going to a Harlem Globetrotters game. If you would go to you go to watch the Harlem Globetrotters perform, um, I guarantee you, seventy percent of the audience is probably white. Sure. Because it, it it doesn't matter. Because it just the numbers. I mean, as, as as a part of the population, black folks make up about fourteen percent of the U.S. population. Right. That's just that's that's math. That's facts. That's yeah. the, you go look it up. I mean, it's it's not a contrived number. It's not some some I just pulled out of, out of the vapor. It's it's true. So if you go to a Harlem Globetrotters performance. It's and it, and it is a performance. I mean, they're oh, all sure. they're all staged games. You know, I mean, they're always going to win against whoever they're playing against, right? Well, isn't it always the Washington Generals? Uh, it's as competitive as, as, as WAWF wrestling. Yeah, but it, yeah, it's, a, it's the Washington Generals. That's yes, always yeah, the Washington really? Generals. Yeah, yeah. the Washington okay. Generals okay. is the, the yeah. team that they beat all the time. I hadn't paid that much attention. And they've actually lost a few games over the years. Yeah. I, uh, here's the thing: I, the Harlem Globetrotters have been the Wichita Falls, Texas, every year for like the last I don't know eighty years or something. It's been it's been a while. It feels like it's been that long, and I've I've taken my kids to see them three or four times. Yeah. My grandkids have gone a couple times. It's one of those things that if you've seen it once, you've kind of seen it. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. might add one or two new gimmicks, but it's basically I mean, the same act every, every time, time. They do the old. They got the bucket and with the water bucket. And they throw it out in the crowd and it's confetti. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's it's pretty much the same I, shtick every I time. I still was. I still miss. The Harlem Globetrotters of our era, the metal, metal lark limits oh, and the curly shavers and yeah. those guys. I miss those guys. Okay, yeah. Here, here's this is the this is a fact. Okay. Have the Globetrotters ever lost a game? Well, yes. In fact, the Globetrotters have lost 345 games over the course of nine decades. Jeez, I did not realize. Nine years. years. Yeah. Anyway, however, with 27,000 wins, the Globetrotters do own the best winning percentage, .987. In the history of professional sports, so they, it, it, it's it's kind of it's, it's one of those deals that you can call it a professional sport, but to, to say that these guys aren't talented, they are unbelievably oh, talented. Oh yeah, they they are unbelievably talented yeah. basketball players. Yeah. So they 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 lose an average of three point eight games per year, and I bet that point eighth of a game is a hell of a game too. Yep. And and by the way, some of them were professional basketball players at, oh, at yeah. one time, and then they and they left the NBA and went to the Harlem Globetrotters. Yeah. So yeah. anyway.
Anyhow, yeah. that, that's the whole George Floyd thing. George yeah. Floyd scholarship in the media. That was a uh, Jason Whitlock take, hot take, and uh, but fearless with Jason Whitlock. If you ever want to see an interest or listen to an interesting podcast, it, I I recommend it. Like I said, I don't agree with all his all his stuff, but I don't agree with a lot of uh, with anybody of anything of anybody. I don't agree with me all the time. So, <laughs> agree with me? I don't know. Yeah. Um, Cinemark. Yeah, we can talk about Cinemark real quick. Cinemark Wichita Falls under construction. Uh, officials are saying that by the end of August, all of the luxury loungers are going to be installed on one side. Then they're going to move to the other side of the theater and start remodeling that side. Uh, the new seating is only part of the plans in store. For the full renovation, the theaters are going to offer the latest in sight and sound technology, and soon we'll be building a bar. There's that. So, and some of these movies, you need to be drinking. I'm so, um, yeah, but how much? Are the, I mean, okay. So if so, if you go to most places, right? Uh, you go to a, a restaurant, you're going to pay what? And it's what three bucks? I've so, I, oh, he's talking about concession prices at a bar. <laughs> yeah, what is the? I mean, yeah. if uh, my gosh, it's ten. I don't know, eight dollars or something for a lot the biggest Coke or something. Yeah. Well, a lar- a large beer at a Rangers game now I think will cost you sixteen dollars wow. or fifteen dollars so or something it's, like surely that. Surely it's be less than you know, that. I hated baseball. Not, uh, man, uh, but anyway, I'm just oh, curious how much that's. Well, I mean, you got be. a captive audience. You're trapped. There. Oh, I know. You're not, you're not like you're going to run down to Whataburger and then yeah. come back to the game. You're you're stuck there. You got to eat. That. So now you're going to sneak in your uh, beers, your, your flask. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But anyhow, I, I'm telling you. So also, AMC, AMC, and Sykes Ten is actually also they're undergoing renovations as well. See that one puzzles me though a little bit about AMC and Sykes Center with all the problems that Sykes Center is having. Yeah, all of the anchor tenants now are are going to be gone. There's no more pennies, no more Dillards. At home is leaving. All the anchor tenants are gone. Now you're down to whatever few little stores are left inside, and I and I honestly don't know how many there are because I haven't been in the mall in probably a year. Or close to a year. I, not, bet, not I, I, I don't think I've been in the mall in a decade. I've been oh. to I've been to um, um, on the border. Oh yeah, well, that's not really in the mall. And I've been to uh, that's at the mall. What's the other restaurant around the corner? Uh, Bricktown. Yeah, I've been there too. Those, those are at the mall. Yeah, you don't go are, into the mall. No, and the bar, burger that's, place, Robin Hood or Robin. Yeah, Red Robin. Red Robin. I'm not a, not a huge Red Robin. Really? Oh, oh I like. Uh, Oh. Um, no, that's a that's no. a Red Robin. Oh no! If I'm okay. if I'm gonna have, if I'm gonna have a burger for lunch or dinner. If, if I'm going to a restaurant, my go-to is Ronnie's now. That's my go-to. Ronnie's. Or Pat's or Ronnie's. And we're going to talk about Ronnie's at some point, too, as okay. well. They're a good one. But, but, uh, but it, it puzzles me because with all the troubles they're having, and it looks like more and more businesses are leaving, at what point do these restaurants start looking for somewhere else to call home? We're, we're, but but the mall, that structure's not going to get demolished. It's going to be there. Uh, mm. but I, no, no, not yeah. necessarily. What but do you do? It, it would cost it would cost hundreds of millions of dollars to just to take that structure down. Well, yes, but here's the thing. But what's it cost to be in the mall? It's what? thousands yeah, yeah, of yeah, thousands I, I, of dollars. I don't dollars know, but that movie theater. Well, I, I don't know. I, don't I know. bet. I bet that is. They are not forcing. Uh, the retailers in there to stay open on Sunday and all the, the hours are all odd. that used to be the deal when they had the, when you, it was hard to get into a mall yeah. or, uh, you actually, I looked into it. We looked into renting there. Uh-huh. They wanted at the time, they wanted a rent. They call it break point rent where basically you pay <laughs> up to a certain amount. And then over that break point, you oh. start kicking in a percentage of your sales. Oh, wow. Oh, I thought it was paid till you go broke. Is what yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what so I thought. You, too, yeah. you, so your negotiation is is in that break point. Yeah. And I, then anything over that, uh, yeah, anything in, I'm sorry, I, I said your rent. I'm sorry, the, the, the sales, your sales yeah. numbers, your actual sales numbers, you agreed that, okay, based on our percentage, I would have, I have a low margin on yeah. stuff. Um, I'm I'm going to say, look, no, I need to make up a certain amount of money over that. And then I pay like 6%. And I'm like, I don't make yeah. 6% on some most, things. Most, most businesses never even net that at the right. end of the year. 6%. No, no, no. They're talking about net. I'm talking about gross. Over yeah, gross, yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah. But anyway. I, to me, though, it just, it, it seems like you, you've got all your big anchor tenants have left. Some of yeah. your smaller tenants, there's a couple of local businesses that have already pulled out. Uh, there's several businesses that have left the mall that have gone to a shopping center up the road. 
and moved in there. Uh, the Acad- I call it the Academy Shopping Center, but it's not really. But Academy happens to be the big yeah, store right. in that block. That and Office Depot or the Anchor uh, Store. Yeah, right you there. know. Yeah, so you've you've already got people moving out now. You know, like at home and, and pennies and all the, they just can't find another building in town with a big enough footprint for them to yeah. be. Uh, not to mention the fact pennies is, you know, financial problems on a national scale, sales numbers are down and all this kind of stuff. So there's a variety of reasons they're leaving. Right. Well, here's an but, article I found that I've kind of yeah. felt like this is what was going on that, that basically is an article about the, um, what's it called? It's called the From Survive to Thrive Key Trends it's Making Malls Sensational. And uh, basically the, the trends are the physical design layout of malls is undergoing a transformation. Basically, they're they're still going to be shopping, but they're looking for a more experiential thing. Because that's why they got the gaming place in there. That's yeah. why the movie theater is probably going to go ahead and invest in that. Because yeah. yeah. they don't they Re- restaurants right restaurants. Yeah. And you don't yeah, have to so, open up everything else like right. the movie theater. You can walk in. All you got to do is walk in on what about tw- thirty or forty feet. Right. Mm-hmm. They just have to open that one little section, and they can because. They've always had that place where they can barricade it off so you can't go part past them all if you go out of a movie. What about an event venue of, of actual just having community events there? And I, I know, think I that, think is that it's probably going to have to be. the mall walkers. Well, you're gonna, well they're going to have to get yeah. creative. If they're go, if this building, I mean, look, it costs money to keep the building open. I know oh, what you're yeah. talking about. You know, Cross country and motocross track. We ought to try that. Hey, Indoor motocross, supercross track. I like it. I like you could it. Do a cro- you could do a cross country and enduro and trials races inside the inside the mall, up and down yeah. the halls and stuff like that. You just got to put in some vents to <laughs> yeah. suck out all the carbon monoxide. Yeah. Uh, or maybe not. I was going to say. Maybe, you know, we'll just... We'll the, just the, the four strokes aren't too bad. The old two strokes used to be you go to motocross races at Will Rogers Coliseum. If you stayed up at really high, like uh-huh. the vo- luxury boxes were up in the high. And the, the way the Will Rogers Coliseum in Fort Worth goes, the seats kind of almost go up almost like a bowl like this. Uh-huh. And when you have the old bunch of two-stroke motocrossers out there, uh-huh. man, it smelled good up there. You smell that two-stroke <laughs> exhaust back there. Like, but what man. you could do, though, with the indoor venue is is you could sell supplemental oxygen to people for like thirty nine ninety five a tank yeah. or something. Yeah, know? that's true. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Well, the carbon monoxide. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. But yeah. I agree with you, Terry. I think, I think these malls, awesome. I mean, what are you going to do with the space? Yeah. And, uh, you know, you're demolishing it. Would cost so much money, and then what are you going to build there? You're not going to build houses there. You yeah, can't. Right. I mean, so what are you going to do with it? I, I, I wonder if there. I wonder if there's going to be some housing, if people will start going into like an at home or a JC Penney's and putting like apartments in there. Well, I, I tell you, there's a market for it. There's a it's, market. It's a for big, more, wide open space. Yeah. You think about it. Yeah. It's a it's a wide open space. There, they're not. The structure is. I'm sure there's columns in there. There've got to be some columns, but most of the structure is on the outside. So if you went in there and just started putting apartments inside there, who knows? Single, you know, who knows? I don't know. Because these malls are they're huge footprints. You yeah, know? massive, massive footprints. I want to speaking of massive footprints. I want to talk real quick before we wrap up here about Winco Grocery because this has been in the news. Yes, okay. and I've seen a lot of people just basically trying to downplay the fact that Winco is coming to Wichita Falls. Why would you? Why would you give a shit? Why would you care? Just. Shut your mouth if you don't want to go. Don't go. Well, they're they're going to be uh, directly east of Lowe's. Uh, it's going to be an eighty five thousand square foot facility. I've seen people but, saying, "Well, what? Did, why didn't they build it out by the base?" Well, look, because they wonder where people are going to be. You got to you yeah. build, especially something like Winco. This ma- which Winco, it's a, it's a big. From what I understand, a big warehouse type grocery store, but you don't need a membership like you do a Costco or a Sam's. Yeah, you just I, I, I walk think it's, in. I think it's a lot like an Aldi, a large Aldi, a large Aldi, but with, with I think maybe bigger name brands too. You know, okay. I'm sure they have some of their own branded stuff. I'm sure they do, but you know, just like United does. And, yeah, it looks like yeah, you know, all these others. Aldi doesn't spend a lot of money on right on taking stuff out of bo- you know front and right. facing shelves and but stuff. generic brands. everybody that I have talked to that has actually lived in a community with a Winco and shop there they love it they rave about it they think it's fantastic they they're saying everybody here's going to love it it's it's finally some some real grocery competition in Wichita Falls is what yeah. they're calling it well basically cuz you've had just Walmart and United and and then yeah and all the and all the yeah but they're and, but, and the, those smaller grocery stores are, they're they have their specialty and they kind yeah. of fit in that I don't really consider Walmart a direct competitor to United for one reason and one reason only 
Walmart sells a hell of a lot of other stuff. Well, sure. The gro- the groceries, it, it's it, the groceries are it's not their core their core sales item. Yeah, they sell a lot of groceries. A lot of people buy a lot of groceries there, but they also buy a lot of clothes there, a lot of toiletries there, automotive products, outdoor products, sporting goods products. I mean, they sell a lot of other stuff. So, so they're not really in direct competition I, with United. I and, have a, I have a theory that I don't think I think HEB's not come to Wichita Falls because of Walmart and United. I, but I think Walmart's yeah. kept them out. Yeah, because you're right. Yes, yes. While they do sell more stuff, they do sell a lot of groceries. They do sell them at a cheap price. When you have a town of a hundred thousand people yeah. that has three, count them three super WalMarts in yeah. a town of a hundred thousand people, which is crazy. That, that I don't think your HEBs or your Krogers are going to go. Why would we get in the middle middle of that mess? Well, Winco, they're building this where they're building it because that's where the people are. You. you they they put these corporations put months and months, if not years, of research oh, yeah. into where do we these open are smart our next people. They're not, yes. they're not throwing a dot a dart at a at a map and go there we go. Exactly, exactly. The same reason that that t- that Tim O'Reilly and company built the new hotel at the Impact. You think they just willy nilly picked that location to to drop fifty two million dollars into a hotel? No, they built it here because their market research told them there was an opportunity over the long game, yeah. over the long term, to make money. It's the same thing with Winco, but you build it where the people are going to be. Hotels, you build them near a highway where the travelers can get to you easy. In most cases, that's what you do. Cracker Barrel. The only reason cra- you 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 don't see a Cracker Barrel on a Kemp Boulevard or a Caulfield Road. Cracker on Barrel Scott Street. Cra- cracker Barrel always builds on an interstate, yep. if possible. They always build near an interstate That's because business. they want to capture those travelers. That's their yeah, core you don't you don't you don't see Bucky customer. you don't see Bucky's on Lamar. No, no. Bucky <laughs> Bucky's will always be on a major interstate highway yes. of some sort. I twenty, I thirty five, what whatever. Winco is building this grocery store where they're building it because their market research has told them this is where the people are. This is where the opportunity well, that's is. That's the most traffic. They're, they're, it, it's high traffic. There's yes. a lot of there's a lot of traffic. Okay, there's that's a lot of local traffic is what I'm saying. Okay, so yes, if you if you just do the traffic counts, I'm sure mm-hmm. that I-44 growing through town mm-hmm. has more traffic daily traffic than Kell Boulevard. But most of that's not local traffic. Right. And when people are just driving through on their way from Dallas to go, for Fort Worth to Colorado, they're not probably not going to stop at Winco. To get their groceries, but you've got a lot of people who work in Wichita Falls that also travel. You know, if you if you, if you live in Holiday, yep. you're, go, you're going down eighty two. That, that's what I mean. That's Calfrey. what I'm saying. There's a lot of I think more lo- when I say local yeah. people who live and work in this area. Right. Probably there's more traffic on Kell Boulevard. Yes. That people who live and work in there who are likely to be shoppers. Yes. At a grocery store. Yes. Than there are that people who drive down I thirty five and this, I-44. and it puts them in the hub of the. The core of the of the retail market today in Wichita Falls, the core of the retail market, I'm sorry, it's not near Shepherd Air Force Base. The core of the retail market is the Kell Boulevard, uh, Larch Road, Caulfield Road Camp. area. Even and, Camp. And can't you count Camp in that? And to some degree, Southwest Parkway. That's the core of the retail market in Wichita Falls now. That's where all the development is. I, Trey and I can remember growing up when Lawrence Road was a little two-lane mm-hmm. jumper, and the only thing down there, well, you had a couple of uh, uh, gas stations, and beginning in the early 80s, you had the city's transfer station, the, yep. the, the in-town garbage dump, basically. And on the far end of it, you had White's Automotive. Yep. And that was it. There really wasn't well, anything else when, over when there. Kel, Kel Freeway was two, was two lanes. Yes, yeah, and no, and no bridges, no overpasses. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was just, it just basically service so, roads. Yeah, things have changed a lot. But, oh yeah, but it does make yeah. sense. And where, where they're, where that's probably right there where they're building is probably the only available place to build something this size yeah. on Kell Freeway. Eighty-five thousand square feet—that's a hell of a footprint. It, it basically is where if you, it's where Journey's End used to be. Yeah. Yes. Or Haley's Comet. Yeah. There was Journey's End. And then after the Haley's Comet craze came in, they changed the Haley's Comet. Yeah. By the way, the most famous band to ever play there, Rat. Rat. You know, I forgot Rat. about that. Yes. Rat played in Wichita Falls, and I don't remember if it was Journey's Inn or Haley's Comet. Yeah. I think it was Journey's Inn still when they played. Rat played in Wichita Falls in the 80s, mm-hmm. two or three weeks before they got they hit big on Friday Night Videos. Most people don't realize Van Halen has played here, too. I didn't know that one. I, knew I, I think in, in the 70s. I saw oh, Rat. Yeah. yeah. I saw Very Rat. early in their yeah. career, Van Halen was here. Now, they may not have been called Van Halen, I don't know, but they yeah. but they played here. Well, they played yeah, here. But Rat played at Journey's and Haley's Comet yeah. right before, 
three weeks later or four weeks later on Friday night videos, round and round. And by the way, Hip Parader, I think Rat did a, uh, once they got big, they did a uh, interview with Hip Parader or Circus or one of those. They yeah. said, where's the worst place you played? Wichita Falls. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, folks. Anyway. All right. All right. Oh, keep it classy, folks. Anyway, thank you for joining us for this episode of Get It Right Texoma with the trio, Mike Hendren, Terry McAdams, Trey Serrano. Thank you for being with us again. Please do visit our website, getitrighttexoma.com. Yep. I, I almost said dot org. That's our, yeah, that's yeah. podcast there. You're going to see all the audio yes. podcasts and what different platforms and all yes. of that yeah. kind of stuff. And just share that and, and yeah. pick your platform that you want to listen on right. and uh, be sure to share it and then look it on, face, on um, our Facebook YouTube. Our Facebook, Facebook page, page too. Yes. Yeah, Facebook page. Be sure and share it across your social media. And do be sure and visit the great sponsors yes. on the show. Eddie Hills Fun Cycles, the 401 North Scott in downtown Wichita Falls. EddieHillsFunCycles.com. MacTech Solutions at 4020 Ray Road. Suite 3B, MacTech-Solutions.com. And Lolly and Pop Sweet Shop online. LPSweet.com. And on Facebook, Lolly and Pop's Sweet Shop. There you have it. Thank you very much for being with us. Take care. We'll see you down the road, guys.